I like how I always plan out the making of these recipes right around my meal times. Last time it was second breakfast. Right now we're on to lunch. And today, by the way, hello everyone, what's up? Today we are making noodles. We're not making one recipe. We are not making two recipes. We are making three different recipes. And these are all coming from Tasty. Tasty did three different recipes. They did a one minute, a one hour, and a one day noodle recipe. And I did this a couple of months ago, testing out their different cookie recipes. And I had so much fun doing it. And I kind of feel like noodles, so. That's what we're gonna be doing. I wanna compare the flavors, the taste, the amount of time that it takes to do each of these recipes when it's not done by a very professional chef and just kind of see which one my favorite is with the flavors for the amount of time that it takes to create each of the recipes. So here we go. So the first recipe we're gonna try is the one minute noodle. And this is a cold noodle recipe that you can kind of pull together with any leftovers that you might have, kind of throw it into a bowl straight from the fridge and eat it, which I am all about. I am for this recipe. I will say though, that the one minute aspect of this recipe is completely determinant on whether or not you have cold noodles in the fridge. If you have to make noodles from scratch, which it also says in the actual recipe on the Tasty website, you're gonna add more time to it. I myself personally did not have fresh ramen noodles on hand already prepared. So I made them in advance and they're chilling in the fridge. And now we make the rest of it. So in a medium bowl, I don't know, is this medium? It's medium enough. We are gonna be combining a half cup of Chinese black vinegar and then a quarter cup each of high grade sesame oil, they specify in here, high grade, as well as soy sauce. And then last but not least, a tablespoon of sugar, and then you kind of mix it together. You just use chopsticks. Just kind of like mixed it up. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Now for the next part of the recipe, in the actual written instructions, it says to have prepared already some fresh noodles cooked and chilled. And then in the instructions, like the preparation, it says to cook the noodles according to the package instructions and then drain. So you would have hot noodles according to the preparation, but cold noodles according to the ingredients list. Just, just wanna throw that out there. I have cold because that's what they did in the video. That just makes more sense if it's a cold noodle recipe. Anyway, so we have one tablespoon of sesame seeds, which if I remember correctly, the chef said to toast them first, which it doesn't say in the recipe, tasty. And he insisted, he says, make sure they're toasted. So I'm, I'm, gonna, follow, I'm gonna follow what he says. This, by the way, is putting us way over a minute total time, <laughs> unless you have toasted sesame seeds on hand, which I, I don't. All right, we have the noodles out of the fridge. We have the sesame seeds that are toasted. This is a quarter of the total amount of noodles. This is a lot of noodles for me personally, all in one sitting. Actually, no, it's not. I don't know why I said that, but I absolutely eat all of these. So we have the noodles. We have about half a cup of this like mixture right here. I'm just gonna stir it up again. Pour that on top. I'm gonna put on some of the, whoa, that was all at once. Okay, and then I have to chop up a uh, green onion here. I need a knife. And I'm not super quick in terms of chopping. I regret my decision to <laughs> wait to chop these while the noodles are in the liquid. Right, y'all? Learn from my mistake. Make sure you have everything chopped in advance. Okay, sprinkle that on top there. And then am I done? I'm not. Garlic. One teaspoon of garlic minced. It's about a clove. I don't think I've eaten raw garlic in a noodle dish before. I usually cook my, my garlic. I do like the taste of garlic though. Okay, it's not chopped as nicely as the chef, but you'll excuse me because I'm not one. <laughs> da, 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 da. That on top. And then I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of chili oil right on top. Ooh, ah, so insta. Look how pretty those noodles are. For a minute, I am into it. Smells delicious. I'm excited. Now I'm gonna mix everything up and we're gonna taste it. Also, chopsticks are really hard to hold when you're not used to having like long nails for me. <laughs> they keep getting in the way. All right, got a good mixy mix here. Let's taste test. Oh, I don't think I got any green onion. I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> I do like the crunch of the sesame. That's really good. There's not a ton of depth of flavor there. But when you're hungry and you just want to throw something together relatively quickly, I'm gonna dice up more green onion. I feel like it definitely needs more green onion. How is it cold? I like, I'm okay with it, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna put some more on. Looks a lot saucier than the video. So we'll see. 
Saucy. Saucy. I only put like a, a like a quarter or a half a cup. I think that's what it called for. Thoughts. It's I a like... quick snack, right? That's yeah. the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like snack noodles. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm into it. Like I like the crunchiness of the sesame with it. Yep. I know that's good. And the lightness of the, the green onions with it, also good. There's a construction. These are very good. Ooh, I got the kick of the garlic. Well, that's good. Should be doing that more often. All right, let's go on to the hour noodles. And for this one hour noodle recipe, I just, <laughs> just realized that I didn't brush my hair today. It's fine, we're family, right? So. This one hour noodle recipe looked so good. When I was watching him make it, I was like drooling. And the chef in the video said, this is a recipe that he grew up with. This is what his mom used to make. It's just very nostalgic. And I'm excited because there's a lot of ingredients here that I haven't had a chance to like experiment or play with yet. So this is gonna be good. But most of this, unlike the cold noodle recipe, will happen on the stove. So <laughs> let's go over to that. I really need to get one of those little like standing stove tops. What are they called? Like a little cooktop. I need one of those cooktops and just need to put it right here. Doesn't, doesn't Tasty make one? Need to get that. I was actually thinking of buying a whole bunch of like Tasty's cookware and stuff and like testing it out. Do you guys wanna see a video on that? Le leave me a comment, let me know. And I have everything laid out and very organized, which I feel like will like cut down the amount of time, but like it does take some time in terms of preparation, especially if you're new to this recipe and it's something that you haven't really done before or you're <laughs> not the greatest at chopping. Oh my gosh, did that work? Oh, no. <laughs> Cut off. Is that better? Hey, look at that. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on this particular pan right here and we are going to heat up a mixture of garlic, shallots, and ginger. Also, some vegetable oil, which I don't have a lot of, but it's fine, it's probably enough. Let that heat up a little bit. I forgot that I was filming. All right, so into my hot pan go the shallots and the garlic sizzling and the ginger as well doesn't fit rachel oh don't want to burn the garlic so i'm just going to kind of move these around turn down the heat a little just want everything to soften up a bit oh that smells so good my pregnancy nose is working well for me. So these have been cooking for about two minutes, which is what they said in the recipe until lightly aromatic. So I'm, you know, I'm a little bit more sensitive to scents than the average bear, but I would say that those are pretty aromatic now. Um, so now I'm going to put in some ground pork. And they said in the video that you could use any ground meat as long as it has a high percentage of fat content to it. So I'm gonna put in the amount that it says in the actual recipe, though I will say that in the video, it looked like he used way more meat than the recipe called for. I feel like these are like two different recipes. Spread this out and then I'm just going to leave it to cook um, uninterrupted so you get that nice caramelized crispy coat to it. And then in the other pan over here, I'm gonna add in that soybean paste and the sweet bean sauce. Wanna get that nice and caramelized. I'm also starting to boil the water because I know I'm gonna have to cook some of the noodles, which are right here. Where did I put the stir thing? Oh, it's right over here, don't even worry about it. Okay, now I've transferred the meat to a smaller pan because though it was giving the nice caramelized finish to the pork, it was starting to burn the ginger and the garlic, so switch it over. Now we're gonna add in the paste, and then to this, I'm going to add in one teaspoon of the dark soy sauce. Okay, now I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, and I'm gonna add in a cornstarch, like a slurry mixture. Now when I made it from the, uh, the measurements that they had, which was eight tablespoons of cornstarch to four tablespoons of water, sorry, teaspoons of both. It's a two to one ratio. I found that it was way too cornstarchy and it wasn't like liquid enough. Uh, like even as it is like with this, it's just, I might add some more water to this. It was just dry chunks of cornstarch with like a hint of water. Stir that up and add it in. I'm supposed to add water to this. So this is looking a little bit thick. Add a couple of tablespoons of water. And then this is supposed to cook for about 15 minutes or so. So I'm gonna transfer this over to this burner on low to cook so I can cook up 
the egg. For the egg mixture, I have one egg beaten here, a little bit of oil in the pan here. It's nice and hot. And what the chef was saying in the video is that he likes the egg to have more of like a caramelized feel, not like the more Western version of a scrambled egg, which is very like soft and fluffy and light. Like he wants like a crust almost on it. And in the recipe, they said to like make it nice and even and cut it into little thin slivers and stuff. And then the chef sort of like dumped it in, like kind of chopped it up and it was fine. So I'm gonna do it his way. I mean, I can overcook scrambled eggs. That I got covered. While that's just giving that another 30 seconds, I'm gonna dump the noodles into the boiling water. Those are gonna go for about like two minutes. That looks good. And they also said to like constantly be stirring the noodles up. Where are my chopsticks? Around. I'm gonna set a timer for about two minutes. Then the plate. I'm gonna take half of those noodles, put them into a bowl, and then I'm gonna put some of the scrambled eggs in, sprinkle with a little bit of cucumbers, and then we're gonna add the caramelized sauce on top. It looks so much better when you add it on camera. As soon as I've mixed it all together, it looks less good. Let's give this, whoa. Gonna get all over myself. Give this a little taste. Mmm. No, no, I like that. I like the bean. I like the pork with it. It's not a very strong pork flavor though. Even the egg too. I really like it with the egg in it. It's good. It. Yes, you can. Chris, coming in when there's food to eat. I was excited for this one. Oh, you like this one the best out of all three? Oh, I thought I thought it looked good. I don't know why I'm holding the bowl for you like you're an infant. <laughs> Thoughts? Um. Oh, not your favorite. Not the flavor I was expecting. Um, something about that meat, the oh, it's the bean fer fermented flavor is a little strong for you. Yeah, not what I was looking oh. for. Oh, see, I, I like know. that. That tastes real good to me. Like he's like, I don't like it, and he keeps eating it. So you like the one minute noodle better than this one in terms of flavor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was simple and pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you try with the egg? I like to yeah. with the egg with it. Yeah, I had some egg with it. Or maybe it's the sweet. Might be the sweet soy. bean. I'm not sure. Which yeah. one. one of those is not my favorite. It is a little bit on the sweeter side, which isn't mm -hmm. your favorite no. like, flavor profile. No. So that might be it. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's so not you're, as good you're as excited for the next one. Yes, yes, that'll yeah, be it. Yeah, the next one. Chris helped a lot yesterday <laughs> to make that one. I'm excited. Okay, okay. One day noodle. So this one day noodle process, if you will, was very heavily set last night. Now this is a Taiwanese beef and noodle soup. It takes a lot of effort that goes into it, a lot of different ingredients, many of which came from a specialty store. What I like about it is a lot of it is prep so that if you have a busy night, I feel like the hard part is done and you can kind of put it together with the noodles and like, bam, you have a meal. So let's go back to last night around, what was it, Chris? Like. 5.30? 5? Five? That, was, that we started? Went to the store or came <laughs> No, no. That doesn't uh, count because I did. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so we started at 5 p.m. And uh, so the first thing we did is we brought a large pot of water to boil. I, I love that I'm saying we in this. We like I was a part of this process of I've been filming it. It's okay, we're a couple. It's we. And to that water, we added in the short ribs, beef shin bone, as well as oxtail, and let it boil for about 30 minutes to what they call remove any impurities. That is not the water that's going to be used for the stock. We actually drained it out. So we drained it, we washed off the meat in cold water, the bones, everything, transferred it to a clean pot, and to it we added a variety of different fruits and vegetables that are all going to add different flavors to the stock. So what the chef was saying is that these are all really interesting ingredients, but they all play an integral role in the flavor profile of this stock. And this is something that he makes at his restaurant. So I'm very excited about this one. So we dumped in a whole bunch of things that are all basically kind of chopped up very coarsely or halved in many cases. So we have some onion, carrot, tomato, apple, celery, garlic, and ginger, also scallions. Can't forget the scallions. Then we put in a cup of rice wine and then covered it with water just so there's enough to the surface of all of the different fruits, vegetables, and meats. And then we started to toast a bunch of different spices, which I love doing this because I feel like it brings out a lot of the flavors. And these are all 
well, not all of them, but some of them are very interesting flavors that I don't cook with a lot, so I was very excited about them. So for example, there was star anise, there was Szechuan peppercorns and coriander, and we just wanted to toast those until they were fragrant, so about two minutes or so. And then we threw them into the pot because the more the merrier at this point. We have basically everything in there. Now at this point, we are cutting it close because we're supposed to be at Julia's school meeting teachers around six o'clock. So we, we timed the creation of this video perfectly. So now to that same small pan, I love that I can just sit here and talk about this because it was all done yesterday. So I'm just, just mossing at this point. We added in a little bit of vegetable oil as well as dope and jang, and then we just let that caramelize, get nice and warm. And that took about 30 seconds, dumped it into the broth, and then added some dark soy sauce to it as well, and then rock sugar. And I've never played around with rock sugar in my cooking, but I saw it and it looked really cool when we were kind of reviewing it before we dumped it into the pot, but like, it looked really awesome. So then we reduced it down to simmer, we booked it to the parent-teacher thing, came back, and for about three hours or so, we let everything simmer and just kind of mellow and get all those flavors combined into the broth. Then you pull out the short ribs only, just the short ribs, people. You gotta do a little bit of like, where's Waldo meat broth. Now at this point with the short ribs, you can cut it up into bite-sized pieces, which is what they say in the recipe. I personally prefer shredded. So Chris shredded up all of the short ribs and then stuck it into the fridge. You could do a bite size if you prefer. I'm just one of those people that think that shredded meat just tastes that much better. Is it just me? Anyone else like that? So now that the short ribs are out, now you're gonna cook it for another three hours. I told you, this is a lengthy process. You have to be prepared. And then at long last, late into the night, Chris added in the last little remaining bits of sugar and salt, covered it, stuck it into the fridge overnight to let everything kind of really amalgamate. So now that brings us to present day where we get to finally assemble everything and make it up now. So I got the broth, it's over there. I need to go grab it. And there's probably gonna be a bunch of solidified fat on top. So they say to take that off, but reserve it because we're going to be adding it back to the heated broth later. Not all of it, but some of it. Oh my goodness, it's, it's so heavy. See? This is what it looks like, by the way. It looks like mashed butternut squash. All right, I'm gonna go put this on the stove to boil up because I feel like, Chris, you're gonna want a bowl of this, right? Two, please. So I'm gonna let that heat up until it's boiling, gonna discard all of this stuff inside, and then we just have that delicious fragrant broth and then we shall assemble. So I guess while we wait for that to cook, Chris, do you wanna try out some of the chips you got? Oh yeah. Yeah. So when Chris went out and got a whole bunch of the ingredients, he came across all these different flavored chips that we had never tried before. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to taste test them on camera. Not a lot, just a couple. So we have plum flavored, curry, as well as salted egg. I wanna try that curry one. This curry one? Carry one first. Yep. Oh. I can get it. You got that? I got it. Fine, you get it. I need an adult. I need an adult. Oh, that's curry. Ooh, yeah. I'm into it. Chip cheers. Cheers. It's milder than I thought it would be. Yeah, I agree. It's good though. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Very potato chippy, and then like a hint of curry. I could have, I could have gone for like a stronger curry flavor. If I'm honest. I feel like that would get old halfway through the bag, which I am going to get to. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, do you want to do salted egg or should we switch it up with plum? Plum is dessert. It's more of a dessert chip. All right, fine. Well, it's not. I don't know what that smells like. It doesn't taste like any. It's not even like salty, like regular chips. Like if I didn't know that this was salted egg, I would just think like it's a fairly unsalted, mm -hmm. Regular chip. Yeah. Like regular flavor? There's a hint of something. I don't know what, but it's just kind of a plain chip. I would curry one better. Yeah. This plum. is a beautiful package, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Look it up pretty. Does it smell like plums? Something? Sweet. Definitely sweet. It's kind of like a sweet and sour sauce. Yes. That's that is that exactly is. Yeah. what it is. Mm hmm. I can get behind that. Kind of neat. It is definitely on the sweeter side, but I, I, I'm not mad at it. It's more of a curio though than a really good chip. Like the curry one, that's a good chip. I like this. Well, that's, that's like kind of like 
Like, remember those loaded nacho <gasps> ones that we had? Don't even get me started on that. Doritos! <laughs> Bring those oh. back! No, that's not what I'm thinking of. The, was it bacon cheeseburger or something? That yeah. one. Yeah. You could taste the mustard and stuff. Like, it was just kind of, oh, that's really interesting. That tastes like a cheeseburger. But I didn't want any more. But the nacho one. Mm, yeah. I loved the nacho Doritos flavor. nachos, yeah. Doritos nachos. Not nacho cheese. No. It was load, we're not loaded, loaded nachos. nachos. Yeah, yeah, those were good. If it was a chip that I was going to eat on a regular basis, I would do curry plum then salted. That would be my order. You? I wouldn't have either of those again voluntarily, but these I like. You're not playing the game, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to order them. You play the game, I'll eat the curry chips. <laughs> Get out of here with your curry chips. I will. I hope you enjoyed this little interlude in the middle of the video but I was hungry and I wanted chips. So we dumped out all of the solids and now we just have the broth. I started boiling some water for the noodles and prepared the bok choy. And they said in the recipe to kind of peel it by the leaves. And then in the actual video, they just left it sort of as the whole bulb. Again, it's just, they're not connecting. <laughs> and then I took the short ribs, the ones that we kind of had pulled apart and shredded in the video, they had cut it up into like bite-sized cubes and then seared it. So I did something similar, only it's shredded instead of bite size. And then for blanching the bok choy, there are two different ways that you could do it. In the video, he just sort of blanched the bok choy in the water where he cooked the pasta. And in the recipe, they said to do it in the actual broth. And in the broth sound really good, so that's what I ended up doing. And then to assemble the bowls, they said to take a tablespoon of the reserved fat, which felt like a lot to me, but it probably adds a lot of flavor. And you add that to the bottom of the bowl, you put some noodles on top of that. Then we put in the short ribs as well as the bok choy, ladled in some of the broth, and then sprinkled some scallions on top. And now here we are, we have the final product. It smells absolutely phenomenal guys yes i know i say phenomenal a lot but it's it's really good okay so i want to i want to do the first taste test then i'll call christopher in and i kind of want to get like a bite of everything if i can mm. i've like broth all over myself i need a spoon i want to try just the broth oh one of my cupboards is open come on rachel stir this up get a little broth in here Wow, that is a really good broth. It's so full bodied. It's got so much flavor to it. And it's got that nice kick to it as well with the spices. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Chris, you wanna come and try this? I think you'll really like it. This is the one that you worked, I mean, I worked so hard on. We worked so hard. Yeah, it was a team effort. That's right, I helped. <laughs> you have to try the broth separately too. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm. Mm. Oh, already, that's just so good. Isn't that good? Mm. I made you a bowl too, just so you have. This one? No, I will. Yes. Also, yes. Tell me how, like, incredible oh. that broth is. Yeah. That broth, though. Mm -hmm. So, what was your favorite? Like, I mean, obviously, that's your favorite. This but like, in favorite. terms of yeah. like. The amount of work that goes in to each individual dish. As a snack, the cold noodles are tasty. Like that, they snack food. Snack yes, food. yes, no, like good snack. Food. Late night snack, easy, quick. It's good. Like it really is good. And then this is your favorite, even though this took so much effort. Well, yeah, I mean, it took time, mm -hmm. but it only took a bit more effort than the one hour one. Right, because most of the one day one is just letting it sit. Well, there's like a lot of chopping. There's a lot of prep work that goes into yeah, it. There's it, a lot of ingredients. Yeah, it, that I go guess into it, it is more work, but but you have a so lot of broth. It. Like we have a lot oh, yeah. of broth. That the one hour one made, you know, two meals. This this I mean, I assume the broth will freeze well. I think my dad's gonna really like this. Yeah, he will. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. like the fact that so much of it is done the night before. Or not, I mean, it could be done in advance yeah, at any yeah, point, yeah. right? Like if you wanted to do this on the weekend and then it was a lot less work the, to kind of put together. One thing I'll note is this isn't cheap either. Like th no. this is five pounds of good short ribs is pricey. Relative to the ground beef one hour one, this mm -hmm. is this is much more expensive. But so you get a lot more too. You get a lot more and it's better. But, yeah. but it's not just time, it is more expensive. Yeah, I right? think they each had their own elements that I liked. But now comparing this one to the one hour one. Is that one mine? Yeah, that one's, I mean, no, no. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Bye YouTube. <laughs> I think that my favorite was this one for sure. And in 
like stark comparison having had both of them kind of side by side basically this one was definitely my favorite um but yeah the cold ones they're fine they're like good it's it's snacko food like i was treating it like a meal but it definitely is like a snack noodle let me know in the comments if you have tried any of these recipes before if you have any tips or tricks because clearly this is my first time making most of these if not all of these and check out the videos on the side in case you have missed any recently i have a ton of different playlists that kind of group together a bunch of these like cooking videos and organization videos and all these different types but that's it i'm going to join my noodles now so i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful saturday and i will see you all in my next video love you all I'm gonna sit and eat up my noodles. Also, the bro I just realized this is a spoon. Cause, cause it took my chopsticks. This isn't gonna work as well. This is what happens when you only have one pair of good chopsticks. This doesn't work very well. Ow.